Hello everyone, I'm Ben, and in this video, we're gonna be importing shading and lighting a VDB explosion from Embergen using Arnold in Maya 2020. Let's jump into it. So first things first, I'm here in Maya, and I'm gonna to go to the Arnold menu and create a volume. This will allow me to specify the VDB that I like. So I'm gonna, with it selected, go to my attribute editor or press Control A to bring it up. And under the file name, just click on the folder to locate the VDB. So I'm using a VDB sequence from Embergen, and you can grab that from the link in the description if you like. And so what I'm doing here is I've just placed the data over in my cache folder under VDBs. So I'm gonna select the first of the sequence and just say load. With that loaded, you can see nothing appears in the viewport. And what I'm gonna do is just take note that over the, the volume attributes, the grids, that is the volume grids, are looking at the density, which is great for things like clouds and fog. But in our case, we're looking to do an explosion. So we want to check out the flames and temperature too. So I'm going to hold shift and add those attributes to the grids, the volumetric grids. The other thing is at the moment, I'm only looking at this first VDB uh, file and I want to look at the entire sequence so I can actually see the explosion moving. All right, so that's done. And if I just press F on the keyboard now, or let's select the AI volume, press F on the keyboard, it doesn't look like anything is really selected. And so Maya doesn't seem to be interpreting the actual voxel grid um, or the voxels on this first one, so there's nothing to see here. So I might jump forward to maybe frame 35 and press F and make sure I've got that selected. All right, there we go. So here's the explosion extents. And what I'm gonna do is create a light to see how it's looking so far. I'll go to Arnold and say lights, sky dome light. So we've got a nice light. And now I wanna go and see how this is looking. So I'll render it out by choosing Arnold, open Arnold render view, and just going to render run IPR. Okay, so it's looking decidedly white. We need to go ahead and get a material on this. I'm going to select the volume and right click and say assign new material. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't work because if we go to Arnold Shader, we're looking for AI standard volume and it's not here. So I have to go and say Windows Rendering Editors Hypershade. And with that, I can now go ahead and down under Arnold Shader, I can scroll down and see the AI standard volume. I'll create one of those and just make sure that I select my actual volume then I can right click on the AI standard volume inside my hypershade and say assign material to viewport selection. Okay, with that done, we should be able to come here and see, hey presto, got a nice explosion happening. I'll close my hypershade for now. And you can see that this explosion is off at a funny angle. So I'm just going to correct that. And it looks like this needs to uh, be rotated perhaps uh, 90 degrees. So I'll just go ahead and with the volume selected, I'm going to press E and press J to snap my rotations. And that should be about 90. Okay, I'll move it up so that it's sitting nicely. That looks like it's still a little bit, yeah, there we go. Looks good. Okay, I'll zoom up so that I get a nice look on that one. And now what I wanna do is just have some nicer lighting. So what I'm gonna do is select the background where I've got my AI dome light and under color, I'm gonna go and map in a texture. And the texture that I wanna use is a HDR file. So I'll choose file. Then under image name, I'm gonna click on the folder icon and choose this pink, pink sunrise HDR. And so I grabbed this one from HDRI Haven and you can also grab it, it's uh, in the link in the description. And with that, you should see something a little better. Nice, we've got some of that light coming on here. However, I'm a bit distracted by this greenery in the background. And so uh, I'm just gonna come over to my viewport here, hold shift, and I wanna place a plane. So I'm gonna hold shift, right click, choose plane. It's too small, so I'm gonna press control A to bring up my channel box editor. I'm gonna click and drag down through the scale fields and then type 5000. Okay, I've got a nice big, uh, I've got a nice big plane under my explosion now. I'll right click of my plane and say assign new material. Then under Arnold shader, I'm gonna choose the AI standard surface. Lovely. Now just make sure that I select that tab over here in my attribute editor. And I'm just gonna drop the color of the base down, way down, 
And that's looking pretty good. Okay, now I can focus on this explosion a little more easily. Great. So looking at this, uh, one of the things that I noticed is that this is a little bit too bright for my liking. So I'm going to go ahead and select this volume. And what I'm going to do is I want to actually adjust the material here. So under AI volume, you can see there's nothing here. So I'm just going to right click here and choose material attributes. You can see the volume material, AI standard volume is over here. And now I can just go and say, hey, under temperature, let's just cool this down a little bit. Okay, that's looking better. And the other thing is, as you can see right now, the, the temperature is what's driving this color here. And so we could look at a different attribute if we wanted to drive this temperature control with a different attribute. So for instance, I could say, hey, I want the actual density of this explosion to be perceived as the temperature. So I could type in density here, press enter, and you can see we get this completely different look. All right, I'm gonna go back to temperature and say that's looking quite cool, except it kind of looks detached from the environment. And the reason is, is that we don't have light coming from this environment and then penetrating through this volume or like the ray depth isn't working for me. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the render settings and under the Arnold renderer tab, I'm gonna come down to ray depth. And if we notice the volume is set to zero, so we want to raise that up so that we got plenty of light going into this actual volume and uh, tracing through it. So just to bring up a comparison, I'm gonna take a snapshot of this current volume render and take the volume up to five. You'll see there's a lot more light now that it's being bounced around inside. And I might even just drop this temperature down a little bit. I think that's looking pretty darn awesome. Anyway, I hope that helps and uh, I'll see you in another video.